Hey there! After sending my Nocturnally Nook video out in the world, so many of you left lovely comments. Thank you so much! It's always such a motivator for me. I even got a request on how I do candles, so I put this together to show a couple different ways. First, grab some white Sculpey, or any color really, we're going to be painting it anyway. Start by rolling out some snakes that are the diameter of the candle you want to make. I'd suggest cutting one end and then rolling some, that way it creates a dip in one end that looks like a melted candle. I'm doing three different diameters for this video. It looks really cool when you can have lots of different heights and diameters together, like my Diagon Alley Nook styling. Okay, now that you have these log thingies, we're going to make the tops look even more melty. I grabbed one of my tiny ball tools, but you can use something like the head of a pin or the rounded part of a bobby pin if you don't have one. Smush this in the top and swirl it around. If you swirl it, it looks like it's been lit and put out several times because of the lines it creates. I also like to drag down parts of the edge so it's more realistic like one side melted and that's where the wax escaped and rolled down. Baking time! While those are in the oven, let's get the drips ready. We're going to do two different kinds today. Let's start the first one by mixing a little white Sculpey with my favorite liquid Sculpey. You want to get a consistency that's a little thicker than icing. I made something that was about the thickness of royal icing, where it would kind of flow by itself just a little, and that just drips off and pools at the bottom of the candle when it's in the oven. So you want something that's more of a paste and can stay on by itself really well. The second one is so easy, it's just a thin snake of white clay. I'd suggest doing a couple different thicknesses to give the drips more randomness. Great, now that these are out of the oven, let's get the drips on. The Sculpey paste is a little thicker than I thought, but it's working pretty well. To me, this looks a little more natural and would fit nooks that are going for a more realistic vibe. For the snake style drips, I'm just putting in a tiny bit of the paste on first to help the raw snakes adhere to the baked clay. If you're ever having issues getting fresh clay to stick on baked, Liquid Sculpey is your best friend. Keep adding snakes at different lengths until you like the way it looks. You can also try to make them more teardrop shaped, but make sure your snakes are really thin or it looks weird. It's got more of a cartoony vibe. I don't know how to explain it well, but it looks great in more stylized nooks. Pick whichever better suits your nook, and don't be afraid to experiment. Okay, now that they've been baked again, we can do some touch-ups. There were some spiky bits on the paste drip candles, so I'm just sanding them down a little for a more melted and less cake icing look. Let's also make some wick holes. You can do this before baking the first time by putting wire in the raw clay, but I always like drilling them in after baking. It's just personal preference. Do whatever works for you. It's flame time! I've experimented a little with different ways of doing this, and I'm sure there are many more out there. For the first two, we'll start with a base of translucent Sculpey. Roll a little of it into a tear shape that's about the right size for your candle. Then grab a little length of wire, the same thickness as the hole you just drilled, and shove it in. Then bake! For the other flame, let's use the technique I did for the Hand of Glory, hot glue. Take the same bit of wire and carefully put a little blob on the end. Pull the glue gun away slowly to make it taper. This footage is real time so you can see how slowly I go to let it dry. Time to paint them up! 
I'm going for a traditional yellow-orange flame this time, instead of a magical blue and purple. We should also trim up this tail before we start. The trick is to use a little paint and a lot of water. We're basically just tinting it. We still want it to be translucent-ish when we're done. I've got a lighter yellow on the tops, moving into an orangey color for the base. Also adding some lines just to make it more interesting even if it's not totally realistic. Don't forget a little bit of blue at the bottom where the flame is hottest. It doesn't really show a ton at the end, but I know it's there and that's nice. Alright, base coat the candles with white, then mix up a creamy color for the candles. This takes layers, so I'm mixing various washes with more ecru and sienna. The washes help bring out the texture of the drips more. And now for the laziest paint job ever, BAM! Get those flames back on the wicks, let's trim them up and stab them into the candles. I really love the gel super glue. For me it's the only kind I can actually do on wires like this. We're almost there, we just need to get the shine on the clay flames. The hot glue one is fine as is. For the first one, we're going to use Gloss Mod Podge.
for the second, let's use UV resin. Honestly, it's personal preference which one you like. They're both pretty, even if my camera doesn't want to focus. Okay, all done. I added a couple to my Nocturne Alley cart because it wasn't crowded enough yet. I hope you like this mini tutorial. I'd love to see your work if you decide to make some candles too, so let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.